the Mahindra Thar. It is the most affordable real SUV that money can buy in the country at the moment. Now, at the same time, it also happens to be extremely desirable and immensely cool. I think it would be fair to say that this is the finest SUV that has come out of India ever. Now, at the other end of the spectrum, we have the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. Now, it is everything that the Thar is. It is extremely capable. It looks kind of badass. But the only real difference is that it is the most expensive, proper luxury SUV that's available in the country. Now, before you start hurling abuses, we know we are dealing with two kind of extremes here. One is 15 lakh rupees, whereas the other one is 1.5 crore. However, there is a common thread between these two. You see, both of these cars, they are legends in their own right. The G-Wagon has been around for over 40 years and it has a cult following. The same goes for the Thar. It has its roots back to 50s. It has its origins back in the day when Jeep was there. So it has that kind of pedigree. And this is the latest model that's been developed, designed and engineered in India for Indian market. And it is a very capable SUV because we have driven it everywhere on all sorts of terrain. Now the reason we've got both these cars here today is because we want to find out what is the difference between the most affordable SUV in the country against the most expensive SUV in the country. Now, uh, keep in mind that the theme here is that they have to be desirable and they have to be badass. And I think in that regard, both of these cars are equally matched. So let's hit some off-road trails. Let's go around and find out what's the difference between these two extremely capable and cool looking SUVs. As automotive legends go, the G-Wagon is a name that needs no introduction. The development of the original G-Wagon began in 1972 when Mercedes, in partnership with Steyr, Daimler Puck Group of Austria, decided to come up with a light off-road vehicle for military and civilian usage. After years of development, production of the original G-Wagon began in 1979 at Magna Steyr's plant in Graz. The rest, as they say, is history. For over 40 years, the G-Wagon has stuck to its roots. But its popularity has gone through the roof. From being a crude off-roader in the 90s, the G-Wagon has now transformed into this lustful item of luxury for influential men and women around the world. And its sales figures are a proof of that. Despite its rudimentary origins, Mercedes has shipped over 400,000 units of the G-Wagons across the globe till now. It's really difficult to have an objective opinion about the G-Wagon's design because it's the same car, it's been around for four decades now and it looks exactly the same. Of course, with the new version, they have softened it up a little, but it still slap slided. It has upright windscreen and it looks exactly like the old car. But that's what makes it special. That's what makes it badass and that's what makes it sinister because this shape, it's instantly recognizable. And when you're out on the road, people obviously think you are very cool because the G-Wagon has that sort of cult following. Now, in this particular shade, I think it looks even better because this, the matte black finish, it makes it look like Hulk in a Hitman suit. So, for me, it is the most desirable and most badass SUV that's available around the globe at the moment. The Thar may not have its name carved in stone as an outright automotive legend as yet, but it has been on a long and rather glorious journey too. Although the Thar was first introduced in 2010, its legacy harks back to 1949 when Mahindra began producing Philly's CJ3A Jeep in India. Over decades, Mahindra used this platform to build its reputation as a proper SUV manufacturer with iconic off-roaders like the MM540, MM550, Classic, Legend and many more. Now, even though the current Thar is based on an all-new platform, it's often seen as a modern-day interpretation of the MM540 from the 90s. But the Thar of today isn't crude like old Mahindra's. However, at the same time, it hasn't also lost the old world charm and essence of its forefathers. What I really like about the new Mahindra Thar, the second generation, is that it doesn't look as crude as the old model. This looks premium and I think it's a good looking SUV. Now the Thar has short overhangs, it has those stunning 18 inch wheels and I think overall the dimensions, the proportions are just perfect. Of course, there's a lot of Wrangler or Jeep influence in its design, but that's not a bad thing, right? Because you are paying one-fifth the price of the Jeep 
and you're getting a car that's just as desirable but it has its own unique identity so for that reason alone i think i love the thar and it is also the reason why it's usually popular in our country because this makes it desirable this makes it unique and everyone loves that now when you park it next to the g-wagon of course that has a more alluring badge and it is an iconic shape but the thar in its own right i think it looks quite well and if you just have to talk about uh, the presence the road presence of these cars i think the thar looks just as imposing the thar i'm driving today is the petrol automatic version now of course uh, the last time out we drove this car and it impressed us no end because uh, we tested it at oras uh, off road adventure zone in gurgaon and it did everything there without breaking a sweat so that was a proper off road test so i think this is the best thar model that you can buy because it's refined uh, the 6 speed automatic gearbox is a gem this engine has a lot of power in fact it delivers 150 bhp and 320 newton meter of torque now that's more than the diesel thar so uh, in terms of performance in terms of off road credibility i think this engine has a lot of grunt and it has a really linear power band and when you're driving it off road that kind of shows because this car it can go over the steepest of inclines without a bother now my problem with this version is that it's the convertible version so uh, when you're driving it on the road uh, i think it makes a lot of noise there's a lot of buffeting because i'm guessing someone uh, has previously driven this car and they of course uh, took the roof down so after 80 kmph this the buffeting is crazy i mean it really bothers you now coming back to its off road credibility well uh, the thar again it impressed me in real world as well because today uh, we aren't doing hardcore obstacle off roading we are just finding nice trails we are carving our own path we are driving around over hills boulders everywhere this is a natural terrain and as i experienced last time well this engine and gearbox are really made it to get the maximum performance out of uh, the thar now uh, this engine and gearbox they're very aggressive in the sense that uh, the gearbox is very aggressive the moment you put your foot down it accelerates its downshifts it's quite aggressive in that sense and it's quite uh, responsive as well the engine uh, it doesn't rev like a petrol engine it is uh, more like a diesel but of course it's very refined and even if you go over uh, steep gradients it can do that without even uh, going into four low or four high mode in fact most of the off roading today was done in two high mode now what i absolutely love about the thar is that it's very abuse friendly of course uh, it is an expensive car for an off roader but without any mods right off the showroom this feels off road ready you can do a lot more than you can think you don't have to do silly modifications you don't have to spend lakhs and lakhs in suspension wheel articulation and all that everything right off the showroom it's ready to do off roading of course a couple of things are missing because uh, this car i think uh, the steering has a really light feel and uh, it is over assisted so when you're going through a narrow uh, lane you do feel you don't get much feedback from the tires so that is uh, a bit alarming at times but then overall the way this car goes it just it is a mountain goat in the true sense now on the road also i think the thar is easier to live with as compared to the old model of course the ride is a bit bumpy the handling isn't that great and the steering if you are taking corners at relatively high speeds it is a little numb and there is no feedback or feel it goes light all the time so on the road you can drive at 80 90 on the highway probably you can do 100 110 but i think that's the limitation of course the engine can pull it to higher speeds but uh, that's not recommended because at the end of the day it's a uh, body on frame suv and it has its limitations but uh, overall i think if i have to spend 15 lakh rupees on a car today i think it's going to be the car because it is just so cool it's just so desirable the g wagon then well what do i say about this vehicle before we get on with the technicalities the performance off road performance on road performance of this car so let me make this one thing very clear now this vehicle this makes you feel like the king of the world it makes you feel like a celebrity i mean whoever you are whatever you do the moment you sit on the driver seat you become a celebrity that's the kind of car this is that's how it makes you feel so even if it turns out to be not that great off road or on road i think that's a good enough reason to buy this car to spend over 
2 crore rupees on this car because this is really worth it. The kind of ego boost it gives you, well, that's unmatched. Now for hardcore off-roading fans, of course, there's a G-Wagon. It's been around for 40 years, so it has been evolved and it's still great off-road. It has uh, the same underpinnings as the old car, but it's been refined. The front uh, <laughs> suspension is independent. Uh, rear still has a solid axle. So it has those legendary bits here. The G-Wagon has three locking differentials and a low-range gearbox, meaning it is hard as nails as ever. Plus, features like air suspension, multiple electronic aids, and a 360-degree camera only help make off-roading an even easier task. Honestly, there's no incline too steep and no river too deep for the G. It's as if the G-Wagon can flatten every surface or make you feel like it's doing that. And the best part is, it does all that while making you feel like you are sat in a palace. When you're driving this car, uh, it feels like a ladder frame car, but the ride quality is phenomenal. It doesn't feel like a compromise. Mercedes engineers have refined this whole platform over the years, and uh, today it feels as good to drive as a GLS or even a GLE. Not only the drive, the G-Wagon is also every bit as luxurious and as well equipped as a GLS. In fact, apart from its brick-like aerodynamics and the bolt-action rifle clack from door locks, which is actually quite gratifying to hear, there is nothing ancient about the G-Wagon. The G-Wagon we have here is the G350D, which is powered by a creamy 3-litre 6-cylinder diesel engine. With 600 Nm and 282 bhp, it has more than required grant for all occasions. But I somehow feel it lacks soul. You see, the engine is not as insane as the rest of the car. It's just too refined and subdued. In a car like this, you want something more brutal. And that's why I prefer the AMG version's twin-turbo V8 petrol motor over the diesel. Yes, it is going to be thirstier and less practical, but then it does the G-Wagon more justice. So overall, the G-Wagon, well, uh, of course, if you are buying it uh, as a showmobile, nothing wrong with it because I'll also buy it as a showmobile because it is very desirable. But uh, do ensure that, you know, you take it out, do some bit of off-roading and that's when you'll find your money's worth. It's like a hidden treasure, this car, because off-roading, I never expected the G-Wagon, I'd take it off-road. Uh, but uh, overall, I really loved it and this is why this car is famous. This is what has made it uh, such a cult in the automotive scene. So if you are going to buy the G-Wagon or if you get to drive the G-Wagon, in your life, don't just drive it on the road. It's brilliant on road, but then do take it off road and find what the G Wagon actually stands for. So, as you can see, we have landed on a very nice spot, and it's been a crazy day off roading with these two legends. Now, of course, like we said in the beginning, these two are very different cars. The objective of this test was to have fun and to find out how close does the Thar get to the G-Wagon. Now, first things first, the Thar, well, it is a very capable off-roader and you can have fun with it everywhere. So on these rough trails, on these rough roads, I think the Thar really simply shines and there was not a single occasion where it couldn't keep up with the G-Wagon. Now, in G-Wagon's defense, of course, it's a legend and it is an icon. So there's no denying that the G-Wagon is at the top of the perch. So you can't really displace the king from the top. But the Thar really comes close and I think uh, it is a really great off-roading vehicle. And for just one-tenth of the price, you get nearly as great off-road adventure. Now, uh, the thing with the Thar that I really like is that it's, it doesn't feel crude anymore. Of course, it's not going to offer you the kind of luxury, let's say even a Jeep Compass offers, forget the G-Wagon, but this thing, uh, you can live with it very easily and there's a petrol automatic version. I've driven this car on the road as well and I find it very comfortable even on the road. The ride is not that great but overall it's a great car and I think if I have to spend 15 lakh rupees, this is the car that I'd buy. As for the G-Wagon, well that's just in a completely different league altogether but what I really like about the G-Wagon that it stays true to its roots but again it is a proper SUV underneath and it looks so cool. Uh, now, my only grudge uh, with this car is that the diesel feels too refined. It feels like a GLS or a GLE to drive. Of course, it's very capable, but 
if I was spending that kind of money, I'd probably go with the G63 AMG, which is which comes with a V8. That is a barking mad engine. So that's what I prefer with this car. It is going to be as capable as uh, the diesel version, but then at the end of the day, you know, that car has more character. That car has a bit more soul. And I think if you're going to spend over 1.5 to 2 crore rupees on an SUV, you don't much care about fuel prices. Of course, fuel prices are going up like anything, but that's a topic for another day. Overall, I think I had silly fun driving these cars. And if you are an off-road enthusiast with a deep pocket, of course, the G-Wagon is the one to go for. But if you don't have crores to spend on an off-roader, I think you can go with the Thar. It can be your only vehicle as well. If you prioritize off-road over everything else, if you want to connect with nature, I think the Thar, it is the best vehicle that's available in the market and at a really tempting price.